All right. Hi, guys. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, so today we're going to cover a topic on immune health. Um, feels appropriate as we're sliding into fall, leading into winter, when we all talk it to be the so-called flu season. Cold and flu season is a yeah, bonus. Cold and flu yeah. So um, I was just reading a little uh, thing today and I thought it was I, I like the take on it. So cold and flu season is just something we call it, but it's not really like the cold and flu is not in season. What's going on is we have increased sugar intake, lack of outdoor sunshine, nutrient deficiencies, less movement, increased stress, and less than ideal lifestyle habits. Oh, that's year round. That are the season and it makes us more susceptible to getting sick. Yes, that's year round, but what goes on when we reach those cooler months? Okay, when I talk about um, increased sugar intake. Sometimes, you know, we were inside more and it's just kind of the blues. I never lived at North, but you lived in the Northeast sure. and he'll talk about how, you know, it's Climate. definitely some, some. Well, you're indoors know, more for sure. Right. So you're closer, closer quarters with people. Right. Well, and I'm talking about sugar though. Okay. Like it makes us feel good. Right. At least lights up that higher brain center, just like a drug would. Well, there you go. So we're in, we're having more sugar. We're less time outside decreased sunlight i mean less movement because sure. maybe we don't want to go outside and go for a walk or a run or you know just because you don't want to be cold or rainy or whatnot so all of those things in the so-called cold and flu season are what really makes us more susceptible to getting sick and disease and infection so Points. the most important thing is keeping our immune system healthy year round and that's where we, what we really want to talk to you about today because it's not just something that you're supposed to target yourself and, and load your body for when that season comes or it approaches this has to be a balance of year round we have to take care of our bodies um how do we do that? It's really maintaining adequate amounts of vitamins and minerals. Um, most of we, it's very common that we hear of vitamin C and zinc. Those are wonderful, but there are so many more vitamins and minerals that really help support our immune system, such as vitamin A, the Bs, B6, B12, folate, um, yes, vitamin C, vitamin D, big player, um, E, K, copper, iodine, iron, magnesium, selenium, I mean, zinc, of course, it's a whole big list, but you can get all of that by supplementation year round. And like we say, how our supplements are designed to take every single day to supplement like a healthy diet and lifestyle, like that is key to it. It's doing this all the time. Um, all of this will decrease our susceptibility to um, infections. On top of that, it's making healthy lifestyle choices, nutrient dense, balanced, balanced diet, regular supplementation, getting enough sleep, reducing uh, stress. So really working hard on bringing that stress level down. And sometimes those uh, yucky weather months can increase that stress level. So just working on, on ways to reduce the stress. Um, yeah, those are basically lifestyle. Did I say sleep? I think I yeah, said you sleep. definitely said sleep. Yeah, getting adequate sleep. Yeah. These, are, yeah. these are really, really, really big players. And of course, getting outside, fresh air, sunlight, if you can. Oh, yeah. Um, but Ryan's going to go into kind of diving into some of the vitamins and minerals that I just discussed that are in our supplements, a couple ones that I didn't discuss, like antioxidants, medicinal mushrooms and all that going on here. So uh, I love everything you just said. These, <laughs> there's so much packed in there. It's like, I almost feel like we should like pause <laughs> and kind of di digest each okay. one for a little bit, but no, uh, look, it is about balance and harmony. It's an immune system. It's not a single organ or, or anything like that. Really. It does require, like Lisa said, year round support and lifestyle measures through and through. Um, quick note though, as we age though, elderly populations have a little bit harder time. We see that in their immune response. We see that to vaccines. We see a lot a number of different things happening in the immune popular or in the elderly population, which requires a special attention. It requires, of course, more food, more do it typically a lot of times has to do also with uh, inadequate nutrition. There's a lot of micronutrient deficiencies. So vitamins and minerals, like right. you mentioned, in our elderly population. And lack of so, movement as we age. Lack of movement, lack of socialization, and there's a lot of different things going on there. But there's something about the harmony and balance that I want to highlight. And when we talk about immune health, there's an acute response, there's a chronic response, but really it's something that a lot of people ask about, and it's autoimmune disorders, autoimmune diseases. We're seeing a, a huge increase in it in our population. It's almost an epidemic. It, it really is becoming a, a lot of people are suffering from things like, well, diabetes, type two, di type two, I'm sorry, type one diabetes mellitus. You have uh, psoriasis, rheumatoid arthritis, 
you have a lot of these different diseases that are showing up and it's really, it's, it's a function that we're not exactly sure what the cause is, but it's a function of an elevated immune response. And what is it? So what your body actually does is your, your immune response is it attacks its own. It's body. its own tissues, yeah. its own tissues. Yeah, it's something right, the recognition or something wrong with the recognition, whether it's a virus, whether it's a bacteria, whether it was medication or some type of toxin, some environmental exposure, something had triggered the body to put up, be put on this heightened response and not recognize normal healthy tissue and instead they confuse it for disease. So it, it, there's a lot of challenges with that, but it, it does show you some things that we need to be careful with supplementation. Lisa brought up a good point. Being consistent year round is the most important thing because if you're all of a sudden trying to supercharge your immune response, that actually could do more harm in that patient population. It's not ideal for them. Uh, but again, maintaining all of the support mechanisms to increase our body's immune response, that is the right way to handle it for sure, for sure. All right, so real quick primer on our immune system, which I think is super important. We do really basically have two types of systems going on. This is a, there's an innate and an adaptive. The innate is just what our body, natural immunity, it's just what our body possesses. Whereas the adaptive is really a lot of functions going on there in response to a pathogen. So a pathogen is just anything that, that's causing this can cause disease. It's a virus, a bacteria, it could be a parasite, it could be a fung, fungi. So these are the types of things that when, the, when the, they come into the body, they, they possess a specific antigen. And the antigen is just a small protein. You might remember like with COVID, they talked about the spike protein. You know, so a virus can have a, a notable antigen or a protein that the body recognizes and has this adaptive immunity response to. So all of a sudden it's firing up their B cells, their T cells. It's recruiting other inflammatory mediators, things to attack the infection and neutralize it and get rid of it. So you know, obviously supporting our immune system is of the most important thing that we can do, but recognizing that this system is in place and trusting in it. And I want to let people know that I firmly believe that socialization is the best thing that we can do for our immune response in a way, because we're exposing ourselves to a lot of these pathogens. Now, I'm definitely not suggesting that we go out and purposely get around people that are sick. That's not what I'm saying. But if COVID might've taught us one good thing, it was like, when you guys are sick, when we're sick, and not feeling well, it's time to stay home. It's time to not and go out in public. But I don't want people to be scared of socialization and being around people, especially in cold and flu season, because you can see that it can actually do more harm than good. Our body does need exposure to these viruses and bacteria and the common colds and that kind of thing. So getting sick once or twice a year is, is normal. That's okay. Right. That's, that's I was perfectly going to say, fine. like we're all going to get sick here and there, but we want to decrease the chances of ourselves getting sick, as well as when we do get sick, we want to decrease the severity of it, right? We want to battle that cold quick, just let it run through our body in and out. So those are two of the main things that you want to focus on um, with building your immunity. Yeah, absolutely. Again, you, again, you can't prevent it. It's going to, we're all going to get sick. So there's three main things. There's a pathogen. So there's a bacteria or virus or whatever. There's an antigen that the body recognizes on that pathogen that it wants to go after. And then there's antibodies that our body makes in response to it. So, and the antibodies is a whole thing. Now we're looking at obviously with vaccines and the exposure to colds. And we know the common cold, we know the flu, we know common cold most coronaviruses. I don't know why COVID-19 would be any different, but other, I mean, it's novel, I get that, but it's still in, 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 the, in the same family of all of our common cold viruses. Um, there's not much you can do. I mean, we're trying to do something that's never been done before, really, uh, on a coronavirus. But for the flu side of things, you know, they come out with this new vaccine every year trying to predict what the main, the main circulating strain is going to be. So at the same time, though, our bodies are equipped to handle these things. And the people that are not well equipped are the sick, are the people that, that really do have to worry about things. And those, those are the types of things Lisa talked about. So we've got to maintain healthy body composition. We've got to maintain good socialization. We've got to manage our stress, our sleep. We absolutely have to be exercising. We've got to be moving our body. And probably most important of anything else is just eating a well-balanced nutritious plan. So something that's high in antioxidants, high in phytonutrients, the plants that are under the rainbow, high in lean meats, lean protein, healthy fats. I mean, so there's no one diet, there's no one supplement, none of that's gonna do anything, but we really have to combine all of these things into one thing. And so Lisa was talking about the supplementation is so important because it does. Supplements play a huge role in our immune system. Of all the antioxidants, I know vitamin C and zinc get the most attention, but there's so many other ones, there's so many other phytonutrients. And that's really important when we start, start talking about supporting our immune system. So in the multis, of course, you have your vitamin A, vitamin E, vitamin C, you have your 
um, other antioxidants that are in there as well. We know yeah. vitamin, go ahead. We said you say your bees. Oh, it has the bees, like B12, B12, especially in the elderly has been shown to be, uh, when they're deficient in B12, that they're, they have a difficult time with an immune response. Um, the multi is loaded with great stuff. It covers you. It covers all. It's a safety net, right? Like right. I, I, I've talked about. Well, it's like, think about it. If you're taking just the, uh, the average dose of your C and zinc on a daily basis, there shouldn't necessarily be the need to feel like you need to load your body with it. If it's right. constantly maintained, if you are preventing right. the nutrient deficiencies in the first place, if you're not deficient, you should be good to go. So that's the goal of taking it every day. Yeah. And also don't forget abstaining from like, uh, inflammatory foods is really important part of this whole thing. That was the earlier thing I said, I couldn't remember where I was going with it, but it was acute versus chronic. Like, yes, the body gets scrapes, colds, broken collarbone, like my little one just got the body responds appropriately. And then the, the cells disappear, basically they go away and then they're everything back to normal. But when the body is constantly being bombarded by toxic things and processed foods with additive chemicals and dyes and artificial ingredients, you know, they might be still triggering an immune response. It kind of, it kind of flip-flops. The innate response becomes the, the adaptive and vice versa. And it becomes this nasty cycle where the body just can't shut down. And that chronic immune response is so persistently elevated. And the problem with that is our chronic inflammation. I was just going to say, yep. All that inflammation, inflammation hurts. It, it's painful. It's, it's somewhat dangerous. Like even when we get a cold, like, oh, we know we're running a fever and we're happy to have a fever in a lot of ways because we know our immune system is working and it's doing its job. But at the same time, those killer T cells, the penetrating cells, there's collateral damage. They're tearing up normal, healthy cells in our cellular function. So there is a lot of damage. So we don't feel good. We don't feel well. It's not just because our immune system is on overdrive. It's also because our normal tissues are becoming subject to, to, to uh, you know, whatever, uh, the battle, I guess you right. could say. Um, so with that, that chronically elevated inflammation and exposure to crap foods and poor ingredients and just bad stuff and too much alcohol and cigarette smoking or just toxic levels, really anything, environmental stuff, work-related, your body just can't shut down. It's just stop. It's in hyperdrive all the time. Right. You know? So leading into the nutrients, you know, Ryan had mentioned the uh, multivitamin. So I could just say right here, our daily essentials pack, right? Mm -hmm. Our vitamin D, our magnesium and multivitamin. Vitamin, crucial. Crucial, crucial to take every single day. Crucial. As well as your factor four. This is to keep that inflammation down. Free fatty acids. Yeah, I mean, so, so much research on your omegas and your cur curcumin, um, the, the help of the CoQ10 and garlic, I mean, great stuff for your inflammation and therefore your immunity. For sure. Um, then you said the, um, antioxidants, phytonutrients, that's the super reds and super green. Like spirulina has been right. totally. Yeah. And, and as you'll read in the ingredients in our super reds and super greens, these are not ingredients that you would get on a daily basis just from going to your grocery store. Correct. I mean, like Ryan said, spirulina, chlorella, I mean, there's matcha, dandelion, moringa leaf, aloe vera. I mean, you could go get single it out from like a supplement store, but you get this all in one here. Same thing like aronia berries, hawthorn berries. Yep. If you don't go to your grocery store and source those. Super, super dense in nutrients. Nutrient dense. Very important. Yep. You also have the antioxidant load in the, in the coffee, coffee, but you also have the medicinal mushrooms, which are really proven to support immunity. Um, so, I mean, this right here, the whole, whole package here can really on a daily basis, again, boost and support your immunity. It absolutely can. Body composition, going back to that, people that are overweight or, or, or obese, there's so much inflammation that fat cells just aren't doing the same job that the, the muscle cells and some of the other healthy tissues are doing. So again, lean body mass. So protein intake has to be up, consistently up. And I don't, we don't have that on the table right now. Right, I was going to say, we could, we should we could pull it all, bring pull it all out. But it, it is so important, guys, to have this lean body, or this, this healthy body composition, because again, that just excess body fat is just, is not doing you any favors, especially your immune system, not doing any favors. So I think that's it, Lisa. Yeah. We did good. 15 minutes is what our goal is. Awesome. I like it. All right, guys. So let us know if you have any questions. You know, you can email us. Um, but thank you so much for coming in today and watching our Zoom on immune health. We'll see you next time. All right.